I think what, well, what motivated us was that we were able to communicate with the cohort in, uh, in a way that we weren't able to before simply because we had so many students. And on task can save you time and it can add the more personal touch to it as well. I was curious about the option for having a different communication channel with, with students. Uh, and I was aware that while my subject was pretty small by accounting standards, that I might be involved, you know, later on with subjects that were going to be much larger, by which having some level of automated communication could actually be quite useful. So I thought it would be a good opportunity generally to like find out about something that might work um, both in a small scale and a large scale. And then when I went to that presentation, and training that you put on that's when it really formed up a sense that i could use hope use on task as a way to nudge students to be doing this more self-directed learning out of class with hopefully uh the result that it would improve the their preparation and confidence in the online seminars which would improve the learning environment and outcomes from those online seminars the more serious reason is uh, going back to my my concerns about belonging um which which sounds really fancy <laughs> now that i say it like that but all right let me try to explain what i mean um i want my students to feel comfortable in the online environment and i want them to feel like they are getting you know um the the, the time from me that they deserve as a student, you know, that one-on-one -on -one attention. Well, I have been sending out personal emails for a few semesters now, but only at significant points. So for students who received high distinctions in assessments, and I would be manually sending those emails out to each student. And I got a bit sick of that, I suppose. <laughs> and I also wanted to, <clears throat> do it at more points in the semester not just at those two assessment points um i thought i could really reach them i also got really frustrated last semester because um i got a, a few students telling me at the end of semester they didn't realize that attendance was compulsory um when it's written within our subject guide every and everywhere on canvas that attendance is compulsory for tutorials um, and when I heard that, I thought, well, you, you're clearly, there's something missing here. And so I wanted to create a system or use a system that um, could connect to these students earlier in the semester mm -hmm. to make sure that they were aware about attendance as well as other bits and pieces that they needed to know early on. If I'm being honest, one of the things that motivated us to do on task was it was a thing that we knew about and we like to try new things um mm. we're, we're, <laughs> our subject is kind of a uh canary in the coal mine i guess of, of um that's probably not the right analogy basically but we we kind of uh first adopters for any any new thing to see if it'll help um yeah and you know we, we knew that we had a number of students who weren't completing tasks or weren't completing pre-work and you know, on task seemed like something that could help us with that, and, and it did. The effect uh, on students' learning experience, I think one, uh, one of the big things at UTS at the moment uh, is the, the belonging, you know, the issue of belonging, because so many students have been isolated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so the fact that they get an email that's specifically addressed to them, that's based on their situation, that's based on what they've done, I think is very important because they feel that uh, they matter, you know, and they're not mm -hmm. just one of thousands of students. Uh, uh, that we treat them all the same. From the student receive, uh, feedback which we have received throughout the semester, not only uh, you know in communication on Teams, but also in the mid session survey or uh, you know in in reply emails that uh, students they have clearly mentioned that they have felt connected to the subject more as compared to other subjects, and they. Uh, they are more motivated to work more hard 
after you know uh, getting an email from the uh, instructor or teacher that how they are progressing with the subject and that has motivated them either to work too hard or just continue working hard as they are already doing so um, it feels like uh, if we have felt that we cared for them more i think the biggest impact was particularly after the first uh, quiz result, mm -hmm. uh, the, the prompt that the getting the on task emails, the students actually sent me emails back. Uh, and from that, we developed these very individualized kind of dialogues around their, how they were going in the subject, how they've gone in the assessment, their strategy and, you know, how they're feeling and, you know, how they were going to, what things that they might do. Um, and that was perhaps the most unexpected benefit kind of in, and effect of using the on, uh, using on task. What I noticed was after I'd send out the email, there'd be a spike in participation <laughs> on that discussion board. So the students would go back and, and quickly fill in module two's discussion board. As if to say, oh, I've done it now, Keith. I don't yeah. know if it has much impact on their learning experience. I think it has impact on um, uh, building connections and um, and I suppose humanising the whole online experience because I think most students thought that it was a pretty tailored email like a personal email i think uh, so anecdotally without going uh, we haven't i haven't really gone through to to double check this but i do feel like we've gotten better better grades on communication um mm -hmm. so the student uh, i think the students find that those personalized emails make them feel um more connected to us as, mm -hmm. as coordinators and, and thus more communicated with so mm. I think we tend to get better scores for that sort of thing because they, we reached out to them. They mm. were they they got this. They they realized they had to do this task because we mm. were communicating with them. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the most part, with the with the pre work ones where where we just see a spike in completions, very that that didn't see too many emails come back to us. But mm -hmm. speaking with students, they appreciated the reminder. Um, okay. There was a very small number of students who were like, I don't want to receive these emails, mm. like one or two out of 700. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's let good. us know that they didn't want it. But mm. um, the majority of anyone else that we communicated with about it, which obviously wasn't every student, um, the majority of those were like, uh, were, did say that they appreciate the reminder because, you know, there's so much to do in, mm. in all of their subjects. That, that things like that tend to get forget, uh, forgotten. Mm, if yeah. they just got that reminder the day before class, they, oh yeah, I need to do that. And then they do it. I think the first thing is we want to use our time as best we can to improve students' experience, right? Yeah. Uh, and from that point of view, it's very, very efficient tool. On task, uh, to be very on honest, it uh, was not taking more of my time. Actually, I was spending the same amount of time with new analytics as well, or sending, you know, without even using the analytics, uh, sending emails to students and following up on them for early interventions. I wouldn't say that it saved me time in this first instance, because I was doing a lot of learning and trialing and it would take me time to write the email and to, yep. like I say, plan those conditions and so on. So it probably, yeah, I wouldn't say it saved me time. The short answer is yes. Um, the, the, the slightly longer answer is not um, at the start. Um, so it added another layer of design to my course in that I had to think about how I was going to use it and actually plan for it. And, and you know, coming up with that template of this is when I'm going to send the messages. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like having plans and all those kinds of things in place. Um, yeah, and as I got more familiar with that, I got quicker at doing that kind of thing um, but in the teaching session it absolutely saved me time um, and and I think it did more than that you know it also made 
bit more effective, um, you know, because it was personalized. Um, you know, so, so having, having on task set up and ready to go and knowing, you know, what my schedules were and my deadlines and, and knowing how, you know, once I became familiar with the interface, um, yeah, it, it, it took over those kinds of weekly update emails because I incorporated all of that into, into the on task functionality. I don't think it saved me time. Oh, I, I suppose it did in, in terms of not having to manually email some uh -huh. students, but then I, I, cr I created more of these than I would have in the past, more of these emails. So um, I think that they are time consuming to, to write, um, but then once you have them there, you can, I'll be able to use them again going into mm. the future. So for the first time, I think it is time consuming to set up time consuming where the, also where the time comes in is the obtaining the data and cleaning mm. the data and understanding what data will be useful for sending these out um but um and 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 also because the systems some don't talk to each other mm. um and where i really wanted the data which mm -hmm. i can't get well, I yeah. can next year, but I couldn't this year, is attendance data for tutorials. Um, and that's what I really wanted to use this program for. It was mm. for it was to check attendance, to, to remind students to attend because it's really important yeah. um, for their learning. Um, mm. And because I couldn't get attendance data, I had to manually still write to each individual mm. in semester. So mm. after week four, I wrote to each, well, the, only the students that tutors would alert me to that were okay. falling behind on attendance. But mm. yeah, I still had a huge number of students who failed because they didn't attend the oh. required number of tutorials. Um, and so next semester, um, we'll be able to use the integrated attendance func feature in Canvas. Mm. Um, and then I can just download that data and, and I'll have, I'll work early enough to write a good um, attendance email for, mm -hmm. well, although I have one that I've been using just manually. So I'll just turn that into a on task email. I don't think it saved me time. I think yep. what it did was uh, gave, it made a task that I wouldn't have done otherwise easier. As, and thus it got done, wasn't able to previously. In terms of the, the efficiency, put in the information, sends it out, it's done. You don't have to muck around with a mail merge, sending an email out one by one, which when you've mm -hmm. got 1,500 students. The main challenges I think are that, uh, as you know, when we first started using it, it, you know, we had a whole lot of technical issues and it really wouldn't work for the, the large group of students we had, but that was before your time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that was all resolved, um, you know. So from the current perspective, uh, you know, the challenges uh, are obviously, you know, how much information to put in those emails. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's a challenge. Um, you know, the, the student cohort and the way they learn always changes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's another challenge having to adapt those messages over time, uh, work out what to put in them. The challenges, they are not unique in a way that, you know, that's only with on task and it's not with the uh, a new tool we learn so it was the same amount of thing you know attending the workshop and then practicing you know with some things uh, so it was the same but yeah it was uh, your support was there so it was the process became quite easy uh, but i'm sure the first time it it will be difficult for anyone you know to try that and to make sure that they are doing the right way so I had the same fear or challenge, you know, as well that uh, getting a confirmation that students, they are getting the messages correctly. So this was, so this was a challenge in terms of not becoming too repetitive. Yeah, um, so the messaging, right? yeah, yeah, repetitive, because I'm, I'm, in one sense, it, like I just wanted them to like, look at the preparatory material, you know, and at some point, the ones that have, it, like their behaviors are set and I'm just repeating again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and after quiz one and qu after quiz two, it's like, okay, you got this. And, you know, uh, that was something that I'm looking to develop next time is to improve, you know, to 
to, to, to plan out again, you know, so that I'm not repeating? Probably the area of the greatest learning um, was in the actual design, the, the message design that I wanted to send out to the students. Um, so my first iteration and the very first time in crunch was really, really brief. I, I think there was a, a salutation to the students and a, a you know, a little summary. Uh, and then there was a, a paragraph about their participation on the discussion. And then I said, you know, see you next week, and stuff like that. And I actually got to the point um, in later versions where I realized I could actually do a lot more than that. Um, and so, and, and, and not just a lot more, I could do it a lot more efficiently, you know, so, uh, in, in, um, in the second version of crunch, uh, I started playing around with, with, um, embedding links to canvas pages in my messages, you know, so, so instead of saying, Hey, I noticed that you, you didn't comment on module three's discussion. And then it's up to the student. They've got to log into Canvas and then they've got to find module three and then they've got to read it. And, you know, why not just make it a hyperlink? So it takes them straight there. Mm -hmm. And that seems really obvious. And, and it's a little bit of extra work for me. Um, but I think, and I, I haven't measured it yet, but I think it would lead to more participation, you know? So it's, it's, it's that old, you know, don't make me think kind of approach, you know, don't make me think about stuff. I don't have to think, just make it easy for me to follow the link and, and go there and make a comment. I guess I would say it changed what I, how I think, like what I think is possible. So um, previously, like with, before on task, if if you had a vast, can you can you send personalized feedback to seven hundred students um, as the subject coordinator? I would have said no. Mm. But now we're like using a tool like that. It it, it it's. It becomes reasonably trivial, um, provided you have something to say um, mm -hmm. and you have the data to to figure out whether you should say it. Um, yeah. So I think it's changed what I think is possible around uh, the giving feedback at scale. Uh, provided they're happy to sit down, put the effort in, set this up and think through this at the start of the session, because there is work in that. There's work in understanding where to get the information, the analytics, the data you need to set it up. But if you put the investment in at the start, you can have a big impact on, on the feedback you provide students. Most evidence of students' performance is there. So initially, the mail out schedule we planned, we ended up, like the plan was to send them nine or 10 emails, but we ended up sending only half of the emails. Yes. So the reason is very positive behind that actually. It is not because we were not able to send more emails. The reason is that students didn't give us the opportunity to send them emails. So uh, with the assessment task uh, too, uh, I should mention that here that students, 12 students, they did not submit on time. So seven of them, uh, I had no clue about them that why they haven't submitted. I've had the special considerations approved, which I knew of. So when we send them um, a message that, you know, you have a missing assessment task, you still have five days to submit. So they submitted within those five days. And with the next two assessment tasks in the subject, there was no missing submissions. Mm -hmm. So that was something very helpful. And I guess, and students they knew that they have the, you know, someone is checking on them. So they want to prove themselves that we should not get late this time, you know? In terms of my time using on task this semester, I really saw it as an investment. Mm. Um, I was investing time in it. Uh, so I was making time to, you know, to pull different data, to think about how I might cut it, to um, trial different, like to draft the email and look it back and, you know, play around with it. So I was actually spending, I was willing to invest the time to get a sense of how it worked. Mm. Um, with the view that, you know, in the long term, this will mean that, I mean, at some point I imagine it could save me time, but it, it's not, I'm not looking at the tool as a time saver, mm -hmm. um, mm. but it's, but it is a different way that I can be, um, like engaging with the students, yeah. but I think yeah. it's really valuable. Yeah. And I think the part that has got me excited about on task is that it's answered 
one of those questions that I had right at the start of setting up this course, you know, so when I talked about having only um, six weeks and the challenges of providing formative feedback in those six weeks. Um, and, and the way that I'd done it in the past was I'd encouraged, uh, like I said, I'd encourage students to send me their ideas and, and I'd give individual feedback on each one. Um, but the, the version of ONTOS that we used in Think, where I did the, the video based uh, feedback based on their own understanding of their mastery, um, I think it's not there yet, um, but I think that offers some real potential to provide meaningful uh, formative feedback on a week on week basis. Uh, and I like the fact that it is uh, in some ways student led, they're the ones making uh, their assessments about their mastery. Um, and then I'm responding to those kinds of things. No, I think it's been a useful experience using on task and getting mm -hmm. to know how it could work. I think it's uh, brought me closer to the student cohort. We're just going, did you complete the thing or not? Mm -hmm. It's a much simpler process. So I certainly didn't find it too challenging to, to, to do that process of uh, what do you say to someone who has done the thing? And what do you say to someone who hasn't done the thing? Mm. Uh, certainly the one, what, ha what someone who has done the thing, um, uh, the, I guess there is a bit of a challenge there of, um, is it is it worth saying anything to them? And what do you say? But it, it wasn't particularly hard. It's just um, this, uh, as a, a congratulations for doing the thing. Uh, this is this is what uh, what you did and this is where you'll use it. Um, it is a pretty simple process mm, uh, because, okay. because of the binary nature of it. Mm. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure that, honestly, it's just around, get, I, I've, I think we've struggled more with getting the data into on task mm. um, than we have anything else. Mm.